So as we prepare to mark the solemn milestone of the 9-11 terror attacks, we are taking a closer look at the state of our security as we continue to face evolving threats. Yeah, the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI have issued some warnings for New York City. Terrorists may exploit the 9-11 memorial even though there are no credible threats against the United States. So joining us this morning is former State Senator Michael Balboni, who was in office during 9-11, was also appointed the first chairman of the Senate Homeland Security Committee. So good morning to you, Michael. Thank you for being here this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So I want to get right to it because as the chairman of, of the Homeland Security Committee, you were not really in charge of enacting so many laws and procedures <laughs> to keep New York safe. And then the rest of the country followed those models. How safe do you think we are today because of those very laws? So I think the uh, New York City Police Department is probably the finest police department um, in the Western world. Uh, and we have invested so much in terms of training, equipment, intelligence, and matter of fact, one of the things that uh, people perhaps don't appreciate is that the counterterrorism tactics have also been utilized to fight crime. Mm -hmm. In other words, intelligence-led policing, going to finding out who has guns and, and, and has a spillover effect, a positive spillover effect, into finding the folks who are committing crime. In terms of the terrorist threat, since 9-11, we this city has seen 51 terror actions or plots. Mm -hmm. And um, out of those, most of them were ideologically driven, 34 of them. But what we're seeing going forward, unfortunately, is a diversification of the hate that we're seeing attacks against immigrants. We've seen racially motivated attacks. And so what's happening now is that the NYPD and the federal agencies have to pivot to take a look into this. Mm. But the big question is, what is the state of, the, of terrorism from the world perspective? Right. And, and, and I think that gets to how the terror threats have been evolving, especially moving now to cyber attacks. We saw that with the Colonial Pipeline. We've seen a lot of companies that have been attacked. How is it that our law enforcement agencies are pivoting to protect against those types of threats? So the, the cybersecurity has been basically put into uh, um, an industry. In other words, it's uh, with the energy sector or it's with the food sector. Now it's, what you're having is and this is what President Biden has talked about, is you've got to now have a more collective defense. You've got to share intelligence as to the cyber threats that occur more effectively across all sectors. Mm -hmm. And what he's also started talking about is something that, that no president's ever done before. He's actually talked about a specific strategy and how you protect networks. But this is also coming down to the local law enforcement agencies that, you know, typically it's always been about the FBI and the Secret Service. Yeah. But now it's coming down to places like the NYPD and surrounding police departments that have to also pay attention to the cyber threat. So, so Michael, let me ask you this, because um, the NYPD came out yesterday, said New York is at a, as a bit of a heightened alert as we approach the 20th anniversary. No, no credible threats to New York City, right? But New York City is always a threat. We've seen terror attacks three years ago. We remember eight people killed. Um, when a suspect rammed a truck into a bike path steps from the 9-11 memorial. When you look at what's happening overseas in Afghanistan, suicide bombers in Kabul, how does that change how we're looking at preventing things this Saturday? Yeah, so, so the leaders of al-Qaeda and ISIS have been decimated in the, uh, in the past couple of years. They really have not ha had the ability to get a fo uh, footing and inspire folks to follow their lead. Yeah. Unfortunately, the fall of Kabul uh, inspired the uh, the uh, attack you had on the population there at the airport, and this is a shot in the arm to the uh, remnants of the ISIS and um, Al Qaeda effort. And so, what we worry about is that this information that's out there in the World Wide Web did you take it, and now it inspires somebody who's sitting here saying that I still want to carry on this fight, mm. and that's really where the heightened threat is. <clears throat> Another 9/11 style attack. Nobody in the intelligence community believes that that's possible mm -hmm. right now. However, nobody can say it can't happen. And so it means constant vigilance, which has been everything that the, the police departments in New York and major cities have done throughout the United right. States. And, and Michael, I know we look back at the dangers that we have faced here in New York City, but we're also very forward facing. The pandemic forced all of us to rely a lot more on our devices and we get a lot of those emergency notifications there. How is that actually making us vulnerable as a population? So you know, it's the manipulation of information. That's really one of the big, big concerns. You know, as we saw in the Colonial Pipeline attack, you had a, a the ability of malware to come in and basically ransom off the ability to operate a network. Well, that could possibly happen in information networks as well. 
And, and that's why, you know, part of the challenge that everybody has is figuring out how to close the exploits that are out there. But the attackers are constantly evolving their attacks. So it, it's never a destination of security. It's just a journey. It keeps evolving over time. But you really have to apply resources and strategies towards Understood. it. Understood. Uh, Michael Balboni, I appreciate your voice and explanations this morning. I appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having me. Thanks.